In this video and the next, we'll create enemy surround behaviors with visual scripting. In this video, we'll start with creating lines or rays in a circular pattern. There's many uses for that, like spawning things in a circle. I'll cover what is generally useful, and then in the next video, do a specific implementation with enemy agents on a nav mesh. If you want to learn more about using the nav mesh and setting up an enemy state machine, I just published a course on Udemy a couple months ago, and the link to that is below. Let's start with the emitting rays or drawing lines in a circular pattern. We'll actually be drawing lines with debug line because where rays ask for direction, lines ask for an endpoint, and that endpoint is important if you're spawning things in a circle or finding surround positions. Create a script called circular raycast. Make an object variable for your center transform. I'm using the player. Ignore the rest of these because we'll make these variables when we actually create the surround script in the next video. We'll mostly use graph variables for this script because that'll be easier to convert this to a subgraph if you want to use it in another graph. Let's walk through the variables. We have the number of rays or lines you want to have, the starting height of the ray, the height it will shoot from, and then the radius. In the later implementation, how far the enemies will be from the center of, um, of the player. Then we have the vector 3 for the position of the start, and the end of the lines we'll be drawing. In update, use a cooldown node so that every second we get a flow signal to draw the lines. Divide up 360 degrees by the number of rays or lines that you want, and then you can define this value as the angle of each ray. Next, we can step through the 360 degrees of each angle of the ray. It's just a cheeky way of doing the for loop. Instead of looping 0, 1, 2, 3, if we had four rays, say we'd loop 0, 90, 180, 270. Then we have a little offset value here. If we think of our lines as pizza slices, this just rotates the whole pizza. Once we have the degrees for each angle that will carve up the pizza, convert the degrees to radians by multiplying them by mathf get degrees to radians. Now let's just talk about radians for a moment. A reminder of what pi is helps give context to radians. Pi is the ratio of the circumference of the circle to the diameter. The length of a circumference is just over three diameters. One, two, three, and a little bit more, and that's where we get the pi number. A circle's diameter and pi aren't really that convenient or intuitive as a measurement of angles. But if we look at the radius and make an arc the length of the radius, we get radians, a measure that ties together angles, arcs, and the radius of a circle. To get familiar with radians, let's count a full turn around the circle. So we have one, two, three, so that's pi, four, five, six, 6.28, double pi. We can see then that measuring an angle is the same as measuring the length of an arc. One turn around the circle, the circumference equals two pi radians. 2 pi is pretty awkward. There's no reason to keep pi around. Instead, consider using tau. Tau is 6.28, or double pi, and the tau symbol is a t, like turn. With tau, radians are expressed in clear fractions around the circle. Two turns, or full rotations around the circle, then, is 2 tau radians, rather than 2 times 2 pi radians, which is pretty clunky. Radians are preferred in physics and engineering, and now you kind of know why if you didn't know already. We're talking about radians because we're using Unity's sine and cosine functions to find points around the circle, and those functions require angles measured in radians. Radians are also more consistent and efficient to compute than degrees. To convert degrees to radians, just multiply your degrees by mathf get degrees to radians. If you multiplied this by one degree, you would get, um, it's probably pretty small. Um, I'm gonna bring up the Windows calculator. If you go in the little hamburger menu and go all the way down, you'll see that it says angle there. Here there's a handy degrees to radian conversion. One degree then is 0 0.017 radians, which is what Unity is using in the get degrees to radian function. So we can put 180 degrees in and see that 180 degrees in radians is pi radians or half tau. We have the angles we're shooting each ray from, but we don't yet have the end positions on the circle. So a quick review of cosine and sine. We'll figure this out with a unit circle, a circle with a radius of one, and then we can multiply or divide from there. Now we're going to use our angles to find the coordinates of points around the circle. We can use triangle math, trigonometry, to find the points. Our y coordinate in blue is the length of the triangle side that's opposite to the angle. The x coordinate in red will be the length of the side adjacent to the angle. 
Since we're doing this with a unit circle first, the radius or the hypotenuse is one. And we know the theta angle in radians. That little symbol there is for theta. We can relate this angle to the length of the sides of a right triangle with the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Each function represents the ratio of two of the sides. To find the x, use the cosine of the angle. That's adjacent, a red line, over the hypotenuse, the green. I remember it because it looks like a C, or it's like you're trying to find the length of a causeway. And then we can use the sine of the angle to get the y or opposite length over the hypotenuse. Because we use sine for the y coordinate, I think of looking at a sine sign, that is I'm looking at a sine and wondering how tall it is. Quick review before we move on, the cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. With the unit circle, our hypotenuse is one, so our cosine is our x, and the sine of the angle is our y. Let's do this in unity now. We feed our radian angle into sine, and that gives us the z position. z instead of y because we're looking from above. We feed the same angle into math f cosine to get the x value. Now we have the points along a circle with a radius of one at the center of the world. So we need to add in the player's position to move the center to the player. Use the sequence node because we first want to get where the circle should be centered, where the rays should start. Get the player's position and then add some height to the player's y position to move it above the ground. I'm multiplying by a vector 3 to convert the float to a vector 3. This way we get a position above the player, which is important for later finding positions on the ground. We'll set this value to our ray start vector 3 variable. In the next step of the sequence, we can scale up or down the position we found. This is where we're scaling the unit circle by our preferred surround radius size. Now that the circle of points is the size we want, we reposition all the points around the ray start position above the player. For each step then, we have our points, which I'll save as ray end. Finally now, we can draw our lines. And for that, use debug draw line, feeding in the ray start and the ray end. Press play on your end and take a look that everything works. To see the lines, you'll need to enable gizmos with the toggle in the top right corner here. Now that we have all the points in the circular pattern, we can instantiate a prefab. So I just have a sphere here for the purposes of messing around and seeing what the values are. If you're instantiating something in a circle, just feed in the ray end to this position. And as we loop through all of the lines or rays, all these spheres will be instantiated at the points around the circle. And then after things are instantiated, I'm getting the first child, which has a text component, and I'm just sending in the position the sphere is at and destroying the object later. I wouldn't instantiate and destroy over and over in a game like this because it's slow, but this is just a way that we can play with the parameters and see what's happening. If you want to use rays instead of lines, use debug draw ray, and then subtract the ray start from the ray end, which will give you the direction from the start to the end. Now that we have that figured out, in the next video, we'll implement this in the enemy surround behavior. So I'll see you there.